I don't know. Ah, you can hear me. So, also, as a coordinator of Fertino, I would like to welcome you. I'm a bad speaker. I cannot sit. I always have to walk. So, you will have to see me walking on and on. So, I'm sorry. So, um, what I will do is I will give you a short introduction on what Fertinova is all about. And I will do it as a person who is doing research in a practical research center. So most of the time not, I'm not dressed like this. I have a jeans and a t-shirt and I'm standing in between the greenhouses talking with growers. So I will show you that point of view of the project. But as well on the other side, I will show you uh, the point of view as a coordinator my point of view on how the project is from the coordinative uh, perspective. So, uh, that's not me, but <laughs> <laughs> it's just to keep your attention that we do this. It's, uh, see, now all of you are focused to the screen, so we are sure that you will, uh, will see it. So, uh, I can go? Okay, I will go. So, um, to start my presentation again. So I will show you two points of view. Uh, and first and all, I will start it not by explaining you all the work packages we had, because that would be way too boring maybe, but letting you, s letting you see what I have been doing with some colleagues or facing with some colleagues uh, during the last summer. Because you have to know in Belgium we had two years in a row serious scarcity of water. You would say, maybe in Spain, uh, we know that for a long time, but the last two years we really had a big problem in our country and also in other parts of uh, the northwest of Europe. And how does it look like when we have a shortage of water? I don't know. It looked like this. 24 hours per day there are tractors driving all along to a river picking up water and bringing the water to the greenhouses and, pick and bringing the water to the fields. You may think, is this still existing? Yes, it exists. This is the reality in Belgium for the last two years. So, a colleague of mine, what he did, I don't know, can you? So, a colleague of mine, what he did was with a small group of growers, they said, okay, but this is ridiculous spending 24 hours a day just driving water from one spot to another one, it, it, it cannot be true. So what they did, they made a small group, they put some money in a big can, and what they did was they rented a big pump, they asked the government for an exception, so what they did is pump water from a river in a small creek, and from there, from the small creeks, they irrigated the, the fields. Not really high-tech, but at that point, it was a very big benefit. Okay, another colleague of mine this summer was very busy convincing growers and supporting growers to use their fertigation in their crops. So those two topics, water scarcity, fertigation, when I was preparing this uh, presentation, I thought, I think I've seen that before in Europe. And I think there are some countries that are already five steps ahead of us in Flanders. So for example, in in uh, Slovenia, I visited uh, together with some other people, Fertinova, a grower, the fruit uh, production grower uh, of Blanca. And what he did, he has been spending five years of his time, four years, to get permission to build his own small irrigation company on top of a hill. So he pumps the water of the, the river up to the, the mountain and then he irrigates his crop. And all the other growers in the neighborhood that would like to use the water, they also can use this system. So, not far from here, in uh, Valencia, you have a similar system. So we are thinking now, I don't say yet which system we can use, but there are quite a lot of systems. Or should we do it completely differently? For example, in Rotterdam, in uh, the Sparta stadium, uh, football stadium, they collect water from the stadium and also from the surrounding uh, village. They purify the water and they put it in an aquifer underneath the stadium. And if they need water, they pump it up again. Completely different possibilities, but they are there. So we have quite a lot of systems to look at and to try to see if we can use them. What I also know is, when I will have to explain this to my colleagues, 
And they say, OK, maybe that is an option. What I will be able to do today is to tell them, but yes, then you have to watch this, this, and this, and this, and this technology, because maybe they are very useful for you if you would like to apply this system. And at the same time, I would be able to say, but maybe you should take very much care, because there might be a lot of bottlenecks when you are starting to implement these technologies of legislation, economics, but also practical and technological. And also be aware, but maybe, and Dr. Glavan will explain it tomorrow, climate change is also there. We experienced it the last two years, and probably we will do it even more in the coming years. So we have a huge amount of information. And I tell you this story like it is very obvious. But it's only obvious if you have all the information there. If, it, if you have all possible answers there, and you can give them to someone else. And now I will take my head off of a researcher and a practical researcher. Now I will speak as a coordinator. This is what a team of more than 60 people have been doing the last three years, providing you the information and the answers on things that seem very obvious. But bringing them together, that was not obvious at all. That was a very huge amount of work of a large, large group. I stand here in front of you, but I represent more than 70 people. It's already mentioned, 23 partners all over Europe, two linked third parties, so it makes 25 groups of people. They have all put in all the networks they have, growers, technology suppliers, policy, to, to make that information available. So this is the Fertinoa Consortium. Fertinoa is also about growers, because growers are the key issue in this project. We went in 2016 to 371 growers, and those growers were willing to give us their time, and they were explaining us what technologies they used, which they didn't like, which they knew but didn't want to use. So that is a serious amount of information. I have put some pictures of the growers here, but you will see their videos in the hall just uh, outside. And they are explaining in their own words, in their own language, what they experienced and what they think should be done in fertigation, but also what they think is a problem. So these people, are the key point, are the starting point of uh, Fertinoa. We have collected a huge amount of uh, information. So we know today what they like, what they don't like, and what would trigger them to use technologies. And I think for research, but also for technology suppliers, this um, information is gold. <coughs> this is something you really can use. So we have the benchmark report, and you will hear it quite a lot the coming days. There is a lot of information in that one. But Fertinova is also about a book. And normally you cannot see the book, because it doesn't exist on paper, but there are only two copies in the whole of Europe. I have one. Rodney has the other one. <laughs> so this is the Fertigation Bible. This is two years of work of a enormous group of people. And my colleagues, they know, if they come to my office and they ask something about water, then I say, here is a part of the book. And then another one comes and says, yeah, but read this part of the book. And it ended up, uh, before I left it, I had to ask, where are my books? So this is also showing technology exchange. So uh, Rodney will tell you much more about it, but it's a very useful tool you can use. Fertinova is also about thinking out of the box. Remember my example of the stadium. Two years ago, I never would have thought that I would like football, but today I really like football because they can have something useful for water. So thinking out of the box, don't stay in your own sector, don't stay in your own point of view, but allow another man's point of view, another sector can be very valuable. Carlos Campillo and Wilfried will tell you a lot more about it. But that is still collecting information from all kinds of sources. We wanted to go a step further. And Elisa this afternoon will tell you what we did to bring a problem of a grower 
and combine it with the technology and show the grower that it can work. So that is what all the people have been doing in the project, exchanging knowledge and technologies on the spot at the farm of the grower to s let the grower see that it can work and that we can provide a solution from Spain to a Flemish grower or a Polish grower to, let's say, uh, an Italian grower. We can do that and it can work. Fertinova is also about bringing all of this information to you because we can work many, many hours, but if the information does not find its way to you, then it has been used, uh, not well spent at hours. I will say it like this. So for us, it's important that the information gets spread. Fertinova is about finding solutions. Today, hopefully, will be your first step to find the a solution or a first step to finding a solution to your specific problem related to water. I'm also here today and my colleagues as well to find maybe another option, another way to look how we will solve the problem in Flanders. If you have one, let me know. I'm very interested. So, uh, and first or last but not least, Fertinoa is about not the consortium, it's about the team. You will see a lot of people with a, a blue, black t-shirt with the Fertinova logo. I didn't wear it today because I thought I should dress a little bit more, but normally I also wear it. So it's about the team. And regarding the team, I will have to say this is part of it. There are some representatives here. But there is still some person I will have to mention, and it is uh, Dr. Rafael Granel. He was one of the key members of the team that was analyzing all the data of the benchmark. He has done a really great job. And almost a year ago, he just um, was killed in a car accident. So if you see the outcomes of the benchmark study, I know for sure that he would have liked discussing them with you. But if you see the results, just bear in mind that the great guy have also contributed to this. So, but we are a team and all the other members will cover his work and more than ever I know that they will spread this good work to all of you. So thank you very much and enjoy this conference. Thank you.